Today I'm going to show you what's inside of an automatic transmission torque converter and how it works. Now the torque converter usually sits between the transmission and the engine in the bell housing and it's bolted at the back here to this flex plate that rotates with the engine. Now on the input side of the transmission we've got the oil pump and that's made up of these two pieces here. This part is locked with the body of the oil pump and plugs into the stator and then we've got this part here which has these two notches that actually powers the oil pump through the rotation of the entire torque converter. Finally in the middle here we've got this shaft that acts as the input to the transmission from the torque converter that locks into the turbine. Now there's three main functions to the torque converter in your vehicle. The first is to allow a little bit of slip. So for example if you're rotating your engine along here you can see that the input shaft to the transmission is rotating and if you come to a stop the torque converter is still going to keep rotating and allow a little bit of slip so that the engine does not stall. Now the second function is to lock the input and output of the torque converter together and that usually happens at cruising speed to make the power transfer more efficient. And the last function is torque multiplication and that will help the vehicle to take off from a slow speed. Now the torque converter's housing is actually two halves that are welded together so I'm going to chop it along here to see what's inside. Alright, and here's what the inside of the torque converter looks like once it's all opened up. So you can see we've got four main components to the torque converter here. We've got the housing that has these fins on the outside and that acts like the pump. Then we've got the stator that's in the middle here along with a thrust bearing. And then we've got the turbine which has its own thrust bearing here. And finally we have the lockup clutch on the back cover. So quickly in a nutshell from a side view this is what the torque converter looks like. We've got the input which is essentially this entire casing here that rotates with the engine and that rotates the pump. Now the fluid will flow through the pump and go out through this way to the turbine which is connected to the input shaft of the transmission. In between here we have the stator and that changes the fluid direction before the fluid will cycle back around again. And finally at the back here we've got the lockup clutch for the torque converter that will lock the casing to the input shaft of the transmission through the turbine. Now basically a torque converter operates like a fan with turbine that spins another fan with fluid in between. So here in the middle we have where fluid enters the torque converter and it goes through these veins and because this entire thing is rotating with the engine it actually gets flung to the outside through centrifugal force. Now the fluid will come to the turbine over here and it will enter the outside of the turbine from the pump and it is forced to change direction as you can see that the fins go from this direction here to this direction here. Now that change in direction will cause a force or a torque to be applied to this turbine and that will cause it to rotate. Now the turbine here is connected to the input shaft of the transmission just like that. Now the faster the engine RPM rotates the faster this fluid pump will rotate and that will rotate this turbine faster and thus the gears in the transmission. Now at lower engine RPM the entire torque converter can still rotate with the engine and because there's only fluid and no mechanical connection between the turbine and the pump it can allow for a little bit of slip and therefore you can stop at a stoplight with your wheel stop but the engine's still running. Now the stator sits in between the transmission pump housing here and the turbine and its responsibility is to once again redirect the flow of fluid so as you can see when the turbine directs the flow of fluid in this direction the stator has its fins in the opposite direction so it will redirect the fluid once again. Now that will cause a torque multiplication so it will help you to take off a little bit from the stoplight and it will also align the fluid back in the direction that the original transmission pump was in so that it can flow nice and easily through the transmission pump and then continue the cycle back around again. Now the stator is held still by the transmission's own oil pump and that's connected to the transmission casing. And you can see when I rotate the stator here it will rotate in one direction but it does not allow rotation in the other direction and that's because there's a one-way clutch inside of here and that's to prevent the fluid flow from going against the reverse of the transmission casing and against the engine RPM and instead multiply torque to help you pick off the line a little bit faster. Now underneath the turbine here we have the lockup clutch for the torque converter. Now because the torque converter has some slippage between the input and the output it's rather inefficient. Now there's going to come a time when you're cruising along at a normal speed and you don't need any slippage between the two and you'd want to lock the input shaft which is the casing here to the output shaft which would be your turbine that goes to the transmission to allow for a one-to-one -one ratio of rotation for more efficient operation. Now we can see the torque converter clutch here. It's got this friction material in the back that will lock the housing of this guy to the input shaft of the transmission which is actually your turbine. Now the torque converter lockup will get controlled by the valve body and that works through the input shaft here. You can see that there's this hole that will fill this entire back area with fluid and that will cause this torque converter 
to lock against the clutch and the turbine so it can rotate on a one-to-one -one ratio. And that's pretty much the four main components that make up the automatic transmission torque converter on your car.